Today God wants to say something to you from the heart. To love it, children, don't dwell on the past or feel sorry for it by considering the resentment you are now feeling. You are where you should be according to my will. The Israelites complained against me and expressed sorrow for leaving Egypt when they saw the Crimson Sea. It would be better, they reasoned, to remain in Egypt. However, they overlooked the fact that the one who guided them to the Red Sea was also the one who created it, which made them lament their current situation. When they saw what was in front of them, they forgot what I had promised. Remorse for the past may sometimes arise from the present. It might lead you to believe that things would have turned out differently if you had done that or gone. Through that process, you could worry about the things I have already reserved for you, which might make you regret the past. You are aware that I have a reason and a plan for everything. I will lead you to your blessing, just as I led the Israelites over the Red Sea and into the Promised Land. Thus, begin to trust me rather than fretting and dwelling on your circumstances and regrets from the past. Like the video of Assurance in Supreme God. In Bible verses Psalm 512 always speak, Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them along with your desire as with a shield. The Almighty God declares, Teach your mind to imagine only positive things about me by concentrating primarily on things that are less significant than news, etc. Many Christians are defeated. You will undoubtedly encounter difficulties in this world, but try not to let them consume all of your attention. Remember that you and I have conquered the world and that I am their own concern, the weather, the economy, and the difficulties of loved ones are all their own. Even though I am closer to you than the air is, I am an infinite God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. In addition, I am your devoted friend and loving Savior, worshiping me as one of the finest methods to increase awareness of my magnificence. This establishes a magnificent connection between you and the Godhead Father, Son, and Spirit. True worship drives back darkness and increases my reign of light throughout the globe, reading or singing. The Psalms is a beautiful way to praise me. You may avoid being discouraged by allowing biblical truth to fill your thoughts when problems arise. Force yourself to remember that I, the Almighty God, am your savior and friend when you start a day or a work day feeling unworthy. Keep in mind that my grace is enough for you. The verb is refers to my marvelous graces ongoing availability in the present tense. Therefore, don't regret feeling so helpless. Rather, accept this. My grace reveals the inadequacy rejects it and makes you joyful because it makes you see how much you need from me and rejoice in my boundless sufficiency, me, myself. Visit power where weakness makes perfect. Proceed with a job and joyous reliance on me and you will succeed. Plus, working with me will improve the quality of your work far more than you could have imagined. Think about the incredible honor of coexisting and working with me, the King of Kings and Lord of Odds. Take a life sacrifice to God by attempting to 
Align yourself with his will. It pleases me that you practice this kind of worship. It also adds pleasure and significance to your life. Type I love dearly you, Father. This is just a little taste of the boundless and fathomably beautiful joy that is yours in paradise. I want you to unwind and appreciate this time dedicated to achieving the objectives you set for yourself every day. You might easily get so focused on your work that you forget to take breaks. You often evaluate yourself based on your accomplishments. There is undoubtedly a time and a place for both. No, no. I want you to be able to enjoy who you are both when you're succeeding and when you're relaxing. So please take advantage of the possibilities and skills I provide, the foundation for showing Proda. However, Petrel, you are a child of God rescued by grace through trust in me. So rest in that assurance. This is your fundamental and ultimate identity. You are a member of my everlasting kingdom's royal court. Recall your identity. You are a member of my everlasting kingdom's royal court. Recall your identity. You are more productive in my kingdom when you feel at ease in your own identity too. Strike a balance between work and play a renewed mind. May reason more logically and biblically. When a soul is regenerated, it interacts with others in a more charming and loving way. So spend some time with me and allow me to guide you beside tranquil rivers. Joy and strength are where I reside. You will thus be stronger and happier the closer you are to me in life. Allow me to fill your moments with my presence, which will assist you in adopting a more optimistic outlook on people. Avoid focusing on someone who bothers you at all times. Rather, look at me with your heart, and those feelings will flow over you without causing you any pain or harm to others. It is a sinful trap that pulls you away from my presence. To judge others, this is your reflection of that person's shortcomings. Oh, how much better it is to find delight in me, your Redeemer. I like and strengthen you more the more you center your attention on me. I am, in actuality, your strength. You have the ability to teach your mind to remain focused on me. Even in the face of distractions, I gave you an incredible brain that allows you to be aware of several things at once. Make room in your thoughts for me, and my light will shine through every moment of your life, me for success, dear. I am aware of your desperate desire, particularly while you're planning and making judgments ask in spectacular. So trust me to supply you with whatever you need when you come to me for it. When Kit Solomon asked for a perceptive heart, he was granted knowledge and dancing. This priceless gift is equally vital for you. Part of knowledge is realizing that you always need my assistance. It's easy to forget about me and just get stuck in your chores and activities when your head is foggy. But then a roadblock appears at that point. You must make a crucial decision to go on at full speed or to pause and seek my wisdom, comprehension, and direction. You will ask for my assistance more easily and often. The closer you are to me, the source of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. Remember who I am in my immense power and glory. 
even though I am your enemy, the finest basis for intelligence is a state of godly and reverent adoration. Type Amen to make it happen. My dearest child of mine, I sense the heavy burden you're carrying, filled with doubt and struggle, much like a sailor caught in a relentless storm. Each challenge seems to hit harder than the last, leaving you feeling lost, questioning the very purpose of it all. Yet, in these turbulent times, I want to reassure you you are not walking this path alone, just as the Israelites wandered through the desert, facing what appeared to be unbeatable challenges. You too are navigating through your own set of trials. However, it's crucial to remember that their journey was not solely defined by the obstacles in their path, but also by their firm trust in a higher power. In the quiet moments, when the weight of the world feels unbearable, I encourage you to find solace in your faith. It's all too easy to lose sight of this anchor amidst the chaos that life throws our way. Your belief has the power to change your current circumstances, acting as a light that pierces through the darkness guiding you forward, take comfort in knowing that every hardship presents an opportunity for growth and every setback a chance to demonstrate resilience. Reflect on the story of Jericho, where the Israelites, unified voices, and faith brought down the city walls. In the same way, your steadfast belief can overcome the obstacles you face. Let your heart be filled with the knowledge that you are never alone, guidance is always near. Celebrating both your significant and minor victories, trust in the strength of your faith, for it stands as a testament to your resilience against formidable challenges. It's vital to maintain a strong resolve and unshakable faith, not allowing these trials to overpower your spirit. Recognize their presence, but do not let them control your mindset. Take a moment to ground yourself, reaffirming your belief in your ability to overcome these hurdles. Instead of focusing on the vastness of the challenges ahead, channel your energy into affirming your readiness to reclaim what is rightfully yours with conviction and your heart. Face these challenges head-on and declare, enough I am ready to take back what is mine. As you tap into the power of the Holy Spirit within you, let it empower you to face the future with confidence. I refuse to be held back any longer. This is my time. As ordained by a higher power, embrace this truth with your whole heart, knowing that no force can stand against the divine will. As you confront your challenges, know that you do so with support from forces far greater than any opposition. Believe in your inherent strength and resilience, for it is through unwavering faith that true victory is achieved. Amidst life's uncertainties, let not doubt cloud your vision. Instead, allow the certainty of your purpose to guide you forward with confidence. In moments of introspection, you may question your path, such doubts are natural, yet it's important to remember that your destiny is not merely to survive but to triumph. Despite the adversities, you possess the spirit of a conqueror destined for victory. See yourself through the lens of divine purpose, a masterpiece crafted with resilience and grace. 
victory is not just a distant goal but a birthright. Your triumph is intertwined with the divine a mark of destiny. Know that you are not alone as you step forward. In faith, angels are ready to protect and guide you. A testament to the power of belief and divine love. Type Amen if you accept God blessings. In history, the victory of the Israelites was more than a story of battle. It was a story of faith and unity. Today, we may be physically apart, but our spirits are united by a common thread. In this unity, promises of breakthrough and fulfillment await. Your faith and actions are keys to unlocking the treasures destined for you. Embrace the call to venture into new beginnings, whether it's starting a business, engaging in spiritual practices, or participating in community worship. Every act of faith is a declaration of readiness echoing through destiny Readiness is not about feeling prepared, but about choosing to step forward in faith. In moments of doubt, remember that divine strength shines brightest, illuminating your path. Victory awaits. Those who choose faith over hesitation, unity over division. Embrace this truth and let it guide you towards fulfilling your destiny, knowing that with faith, all things are possible. Feeling uncertain or insecure is part of the human experience, especially when trusting in something beyond ourselves. Recognize these feelings as opportunities for growth, not weaknesses. Adopting a mindset of readiness means trusting in the journey, even if it leads into the unknown, declare your readiness, not because you feel prepared, but because you choose to trust in a greater plan. As you reflect on the story of the Israelites and their journey to fulfillment, consider your own desires for change and resolution. Now might be the time for those longings to be realized. If you are concur, comment Haman. Today's message, never have faith in your own abilities, no matter how well prepared you are for a fight, the Lord is the rightful winner. Never rely just on your own comprehension. Never place all of your trust on Jesus. The outside environment encourages us to have confidence in our abilities, face challenges head on, and think we can do anything. However, my dear buddy, we are powerless without God. As Christians, we need to always depend on God rather than on ourselves. God's blessing on your work has diminished to the extent that you put your reliance in the horse. As far as you can, minimize your reliance on natural methods and place your faith in the Lord. The triumph of the fight rests only in God's providence, which bestows the victory whenever and to whoever he pleases often on those who have the least cause to hope for it. It is not dependent on human might or skill, despite the fact that we each have a role to play in winning. We must be ready. Our bodies and minds must be ready. However, we must understand that God, not our level of preparation, is ultimately responsible for our triumph inside oneself the reality that those who are holy are God's chosen ones who are by grace set aside and unique for his own glory and service to accomplish everything that he desires not that someone is special too 
God or selected because of their purity or goodness, because they are selected by the sanctification of the Spirit, not because they were already holy or because it was anticipated that they would be. The election produces holiness, faith, godliness, and good deeds. Type yes if you trust God. They are not its sources, however, the term godly meant to be good and merciful denotes that God is kind and gracious and merciful to those who are the recipient of his unmerited favor and grace. As a result, he selects and sets him aside according to his sovereign will and pleasure and with his own love and compassion and that for himself, that is, too, the glory of his grace for his own use and service as well as for his honor and acclaim. This is his ultimate goal for election, predestination, and all spiritual rewards, elegance, and the exercise of his will he brought us forth by the word of truth. This suggests that the gospel was communicated to us Christians by God. All good blessings, like regeneration, come from God alone, miraculous act of the Holy Spirit giving lifeless sinners spiritual life. This is entirely God's creation rather than anything to which we as humans contribute of his own will as the primary reason he did it out of pure joy rather than being motivated by any merit on our part. God is the source of all good gifts, including our new birth, and all of its bias, joyous outcomes, a sincere Christian experiences a transformation that makes him seem as if he has undergone a complete transformation from his pre-Christian state. The state of regeneration experienced by a believer is the purest illustration of God's wonderful works. The phrase look carefully suggests that we should spend our lives with intention and caution. Our activities need to be motivated by a desire to serve God rather than just our own willpower or worldly desires through discernment in assessing our courses we endeavor to live lives that are in harmony with His will. Living not as foolish but as wise sets us apart from the rest of the world as Christ followers we are expected to base our choices on the wisdom of God rather than fleeting human whims. It entails reading God's word, seeking wise guidance, and letting the Holy Spirit mold the attitudes and deeds as we manage the intricacies of life. We may endeavor to be wise examples because of Christ's redeeming work in us. The Apostle Paul does, however, also warn us that having knowledge is not enough. We also need to actively use it by making the best use of the time. God has given us the gift of time, and it is our duty to manage it well. There is a special chance to plant the gospel, build connections, and give generously to others every minute. Given the fleeting nature of life, we should give eternal values precedence over temporal ones. Comet, Lord, always protect me. This poem emphasizes the value of having an open mind to new information and guidance. It suggests that intelligent people are always looking to learn new things and develop into better versions of themselves. It also suggests that those who are currently righteous have room to grow and become even more so. A sensible guy has modesty. He doesn't feel arrogant. He isn't 
afraid to acknowledge that he still has a lot to learn and isn't an authority on anything. He enjoys making corrections. He is a voracious learner. He does not adhere to his comfort zone. He thus gains wisdom after wisdom. His knowledge grew. The Lord is feared by the thoughtful man. He is cautious in everything that he does. He multiplies his days by doing this, and his life will be extended by years. A wise man leans on and trusts in Jesus. He acknowledges his weakness. He depends on Jesus since he is aware that he is powerless without him. He never considered cutting himself off from him since doing so would leave him sad and powerless. Let us emulate the prudent man who trusts in Jesus rather than in himself. There is never a time for a Christian to be fully content with their knowledge or comprehension. The Bible exhorts Christians to grow in their knowledge of God and in their relationship with Him. Intelligent, God gains benefit from anything you offer Him. One day, He will hear His Master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Let us strive to be as intelligent as He was, brethren and to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, from our Lord. To receive it, type 11, 11 then, send this divine video to seven people who believe in Lord. For the whole lot that became written within the past, turned into written to educate us, so that via the patience, taught inside the scriptures, and the encouragement, the offer we might have wish, Romans 15 to 4. Dear listeners, let's join our prayers together. Oh God, we are very appreciative of the fact that you are our champion, that you speak up for us, that you are the writer and perfectionist of our faith, and that you never abandon us instead promising to Finish the excellent job you have started in us. We are grateful to you for being the bread of life and the living water for providing for all of our needs and fulfilling us in ways that nothing else can. We are also grateful for your unceasing pouring of love, support, and belief in us. We are thankful that you are our comforter that no tear we should elude your careful observation, and that you record every tear in your book, that you always have an ear to listen to us, that you are our deliverer, our rock, our refuge, our fortress, and our constant source of support during difficult times. Thank you for being our shepherd who leads, looks out for, protects, and guides us we are thankful that you are the bright and morning star who dispels darkness with your radiant light. We are also thankful that you are our counselor who gives wisdom and guidance to all who ask. We are also thankful that you offer to show us great and mighty things that we are unaware of when we ask. It is very wonderful to be adored by you. The mountains before us crumble, the struggles and suffering of this life seem smaller and lighter, and we remember who we are in you. We remember your power. Amen. It is foremost that you continue to support our channel, and we will try to make you feel good for always, and you can consider donating to us through Super Thanks.